Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to the first show of the 11th season of Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly. I'm Jack Nolan, joined as always by the head coach of the Fighting Irish. Only this season we will connect via Zoom during a season that will be unlike any other at Notre Dame. But, Coach, you open the season in a very familiar way with Notre Dame's 19th straight win at home, a 27-13 win over Duke. Yeah, it was uh, certainly one that we didn't know that we were going to get to, but uh, hopeful. Uh, there was a lot of work, a uh, great deal of sacrifice on a lot of people's parts, um, support staff, the university, uh, but most importantly, our players. The commitment that they made to uh, battle uh, COVID-19 uh, got them to this day and, and got them a victory and so very proud of them. We are going to break down all the big plays in this game and this show, but I do want to mention the fans. There weren't many there, just over 10,000, but I was surprised at how good the atmosphere was. Yeah, I will I will agree with you. We didn't know really what to expect, uh, quite frankly. Uh, we were preparing for an environment that we had to create all of the energy uh, ourselves, that we had to get into our optimal zones and, um, be ready for that. But uh, I think our students, our, our faculty, staff, those that were, were on hand, the families, uh, our band, uh, let's not forget them, created a, a very nice environment for us to play. I, I did not feel that it was um, quite um, unusually different. It's certainly different, but not unusually different in the sense that uh, they could go out and play and play at a high level. Coach and I will be back to break down Notre Dame's season opening victory over Duke right after this timeout. It's time now for our game breakdown brought to you by Cannon. Brian, what are you most pleased with from your opening win? Well, there's a number of things. You know, first and foremost, we played a lot of players and in an opener where you haven't played uh, since December of 2019, uh, the speed of the game is so important to get a lot of players in, and, and we did that. On the offensive side of the ball, uh, you know, I could go through all the names. We know them already, you know, from Kyron Williams to, to Joe Wilkins uh, to Mike Mayer, all of those guys on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, uh, the ability to play 11 defensive linemen, a number of different players in the back end, four linebackers. So getting all of that work uh, is so very important to the development of your football team and to get a win against a Power 5 opponent. And a team like Duke that uh, is a very well-coached football team and uh, made things difficult for us in the first half. Your offense gets into a really good rhythm after the turnover, something they struggled with in the first half. What adjustments did you make at halftime? Well, I think, you know, if you look at it, in the first half we had, I think, about 35 yards rushing, and we finished with about 165. So the first thing was to get into some um, outside zone runs that we showed a little bit more patience with. Uh, I think our backs were starting to see it a little bit better. Uh, and, and I think just consistency, right? We, we didn't panic. Uh, we didn't go away from the run. We kept running the football. And, and as I, I talked to uh, the offensive staff at halftime, it's like, listen, we're going to continue to run the football, continue to be who we are. Let's not obviously you know, abandon uh, what we want to be. And I think, I think that patience um, was well served because we then started to control the line of scrimmage. And once we, we were able to get the line of scrimmage, we were able to, to do the kind of things we needed to win the ball game. Those adjustments showed up on this drive that ended with a 26-yard touchdown run by Kyron Williams, his second touchdown of the day. Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, short yardage situation where he's able to bounce it outside. And uh, we got, again, another really good block on the perimeter by McKinley, and uh, he's able to walk in the end zone. So, you know, again, uh, this is about, you know, the consistency of running the football, being physical up front, and then finally exerting your will. I mean, again, if you abandon the run game at this point, uh, then who knows what's going to happen. The strength of this defense was at their cornerback position. They had two outstanding corners, as I said, leading into this game. Probably the two best corners that we're going to see all year. Um, there, there might be some others that can rival them, but these two were outstanding uh, and they're edge players. Uh, so uh, being physical, continue to run the football at them, and, and it started to show itself in the second half. You made no secret heading into the game that Williams had emerged as the number one running back. But wow, after rushing for just 26 yards all of last season, he earned the game ball by rushing for 112 yards, 
while racking up 93 receiving yards, the first Notre Dame player to do that in 25 years. Yeah, and, and I think he's got an incredible long way to go in terms of um, his development. And uh, I'm happy for him. I know, um, you know, our entire team is happy for, for the success that he had, but uh, I think he'll tell you that he's got a lot um, of growth ahead of him. And it was a great start for him. He's going to attribute a lot of this to uh, this, the, the offensive line and, and those people around him that, that gave him this opportunity. But um, it's going to be nice to see his growth um, over the course of this year. Duke would score again, but you put the game away with a 15-play, 83-yard drive that included two catches by Avery Davis, the last, the 17-yard reception for the touchdown. I know you feel good for Avery, a senior who has done everything you have asked him to do during his years at Notre Dame. Yeah, good for Avery, right? You know, he started as a quarterback. We moved him around a little bit. He was on defense, uh, running back, and, and uh, really trying to find a place for him where he could contribute. And boy, did he contribute on Saturday. You know, one-on-one -on -one coverage goes up and uh, takes a 50-50 ball away. And then obviously a big third down conversion for us as well. And, you know, we knew he was capable of making big plays. He did as a high schooler, leading his uh, 5A team. Um, in, in Texas, the state championship. So he's got that pedigree. And uh, when the game's on the line, uh, he's a guy you want to look for. Thanks, Brian. Folks, when we come back, we'll take a look at some of the other bright spots that came out of the win over Duke. And Coach will give his analysis of how captain and quarterback Ian Book played against the Blue Devils. Coach, an impressive debut against Duke for freshman tight end Michael Mayer. At 6'5", 235, he does not look like a freshman, and he does not play like a freshman. Mayer caught all three passes thrown him Saturday, and he did a good job blocking as well. Yeah, he's going to be a really nice player for us. And it's just a matter of him maturing and, you know, getting more involved in our offense. And we've got so many really good tight ends. And so he's in a long line of many great tight ends that have come through the the ranks here at Notre Dame. So uh, really, really excited about uh, where he's going to be, uh, you know, this year. I mean, it's just, he needs some more time, more reps, uh, but he, he made a nice, couple of nice, really big plays for us in, in this game against Duke. Now I'm, I'm hearing that his nickname on the team is Baby Grunk, pretty high praise. Who came up with that? Well, I don't know who exactly came up with it, but you know, if you take the big uh, third down conversion where he broke through the tackle, I can see where it came from. Um, but he's just a, he's a very talented young man and I think he's well respected by everybody. The biggest spotlight on Notre Dame football always focuses on you and your quarterback. Not only does Ian Book carry leadership responsibilities for the offense, he carries big expectations. So how do you evaluate his play in game one? Well, I think, you know, anytime you talk about uh, your quarterback, you want to talk about winning and uh, Ian Book wins. Uh, so, you know, uh, at the end of the day, the guy finds a way to win. Can he play better? Yes. Uh, can I coach better? Yes, we all can. And so I think we evaluate ourselves critically here uh, in this building. Um, but we also look at the fact that winning is what the byproduct is and we want to win football games. So um, we're going to get back at it this week. We're going to look at the things that we need to get better at. And uh, we're certainly going to do that. And um, I think when you talk about Ian Book, the nice part about it is he's a winner. So I first got into football when my brother decided to play. I was in uh, second grade and then third grade. Uh, I was just thrown kind of on the sideline of my brother's game. And uh, one of the coaches said, you should try out for football. And I did. And I remember my first play, my very first play, I got sacked, told my dad I never want to play again. And uh, he, he encouraged me and said my brother to go back out and uh, fell in love with the game ever since. So my first visit here was awesome. I came when there was, it was in the summer. There was really nobody here. I came with my family was just like in love with all the tradition and everything that Notre Dame had to offer. And I knew right at that point that, you know, this is a spot that I wanted to be at. My family's been a huge support. My mom and dad have never missed the game, uh, home and away. And uh, that means a lot just to know that they're there and, you know, always supporting me and having fun. And, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more. I think Notre Dame's unique just because of how involved the student body is. With every game, the students are there. You know, kids get up at 6 a.m. for the games, ready to go. and. 
I don't have a favorite spot, but sometimes I like to just walk around campus. I feel like sometimes I get too much in, into a routine and feel like I'm going the same direction every single day. So I just like to go on a walk randomly and kind of just walk around the whole entire campus and listen to music. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Football. If there was a sports dictionary where you could look up the definition of what a good teammate is, the accompanying picture would be of Avery Davis. Since arriving at Notre Dame four seasons ago, Davis has played receiver, running back, cornerback, and even quarterback for the Fighting Irish. Every time Davis has been asked to change positions, he has not hesitated. He has just gone to work, learning the nuances of his new position. He has had his moments, including last season when he caught a 59-yard touchdown pass against New Mexico and made a critical third down catch during Notre Dame's game-winning drive against Virginia Tech. This season, Avery has used his outstanding skill set and extensive experience to earn the starting spot at slot receiver for the Irish. Saturday against Duke, he made two huge catches on the drive that put the game away for Notre Dame, a nine-yard reception on third and eight early in the drive, and then the 17-yard touchdown reception on a 50-50 ball that concluded the drive. After the game, he visited the media room for this week's Instant Reaction, sponsored by Sirius XM. All right, we're going to go ahead and begin with wide receiver Avery Davis. Avery, this first question is from Lane Higgins of the Wall Street Journal. What was it like to go out there and play for the first time in so long, and was it difficult to get into a game day groove given the run-up to the season has been so different? Um, first of all, it was just a blessing to be back out there. Um, I don't think it was difficult for us to, to get a groove going. I mean, it felt it was difficult for us to get a, a flow, but I think intensity-wise and like attention to detail and excitement-wise, no, we weren't lacking in that. We were very excited to be out there. In terms of the atmosphere, this is from Patrick Engel. What were you expecting from the student body, and what did you experience? Honestly, I was expecting a lot less. I didn't think there was going to be that many people in there. So to see them and to hear them and like feel their energy, that was really exciting. So I really appreciate it. And also from Pete Sampson regarding the atmosphere, what was it like to sing the alma mater while socially distant? Very awkward. Um, but uh, we still got it done, so I'm glad we still got to do it. Take us through your touchdown, what you saw, um, and your reaction afterwards. Um, so it was just a, a seam. It was man coverage, so it was just me versus him. And um, he covered me pretty well, but when the ball was in the air, I just, I just needed it. I couldn't let that opportunity pass. And how would you evaluate the effectiveness of the passing game in the Notre Dame offense today? Uh, in the passing game, I think we have a lot of potential. I think we were trying to emphasize the run very heavily, and we executed well in that regards. But in the passing game, we're, we have a lot of potential, and I'm looking forward to getting that going further in the season. And what were your impressions of Ian Buck in today's game? I think he managed the game very well. He got the ball to the right players, and I think he did a, a, a good job and got us the win, led us to the win. We will introduce another new segment for 2020 here on Inside Notre Dame Football right after this timeout. It's time now for Irish Intel, sponsored by TireRack.com. Coach, this is where we let you control the video and get into the X's and O's of why a play worked. First up this week, the gutsy fake punt you called on fourth and eight on your own 21-yard line, trailing Duke 3-0 in the second quarter. Well, we had noticed uh, on the backside of their punt return, they squeezed down heavily. And you can see the entire Duke defense is inside the hash which gave them no contain on the backside of their punt return. So uh, it became a pretty uh, pretty easy read for, for Jay to get out the backside uh, of the punt protection and uh, kind of find his way to the first down marker. Now let's take a look at Kyron Williams' 26-yard touchdown run on fourth and one at the 7.57 mark of the third quarter. 
Yeah, so this is a downhill belly play, which is supposed to hit up in the B gap. But you can see that they've canceled out all the inside gaps. And again, uh, the, the back has the option here. If everything is canceled, in other words, all the gaps have been canceled out, he can bounce this outside. And with no contain again, it bounces out on the perimeter. We get a great block by Javon McKinley. And again, uh, Kyron is able to, to walk on into the end zone and, and come up with a big touchdown. Our final play this week is a play I know brought a smile to your face, Coach, not just because it put the game away, but because of the young man who made the play and the fact that he has worked so hard during his four seasons at Notre Dame and has done everything you have ever, ever asked him to do, including switching the side of the ball that he plays on. Yeah, this is uh, this is choice T option, and, and the T here is, is Avery. Uh, you can see it's man-to-man -man coverage all the way across the field. We bring the back back into the backfield, and we're looking for Avery. He's going to stop when he gets halfway in the end zone, and he's going to come back to the field, uh, come back to get the football. Ian's going to put it on his back shoulder, and it's going to be virtually impossible for the defender to get to the football. Just a really good throw, uh, good read versus man-to-man -man coverage and Avery makes a play. These are all one-on-ones, and somebody's got to make a 50-50 uh, catch here, and, and Avery comes up with the football. That will do it for this edition of Irish Intel, brought to you by the experts at TireRack.com. Don't wait for tomorrow. Make the days count. Gatorade has carbs to fuel and electrolytes to help replenish, so you can count on the proven formula. Nothing beats Gatorade. You may not play the same game as everyone else, but South Bend Orthopedics believes you are definitely part of the same team. Let us get you back in the game. So, we buy shoes online, and socks, and shoe socks, and baby food, dog food, parrot food, gardening tools, art supplies, college classes, scarf, the scarf tube, sleeping bag suit, yeah. So why not buy tires online? TireRack.com is North America's largest online retailer of tires. Find, buy, then have them shipped to one of our trusted independent installers for safe, easy installation. TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. Online, with all that other stuff. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Football. I saved this for the last segment of our show, Coach, because I know you didn't want to make a big deal out of it. But congratulations are in order. It was announced during Saturday's game that Notre Dame and you have agreed on a contract extension through the 2024 season. Well, thanks, Jack. Um, you know, it's a great honor to, to represent Notre Dame as head football coach in such a, you know, historic uh, university. And look, there's so many great coaches and so many great players that have played here that have given me this opportunity to uh uh, to be here this long. And uh, so I consider it just a, a great honor to continue in that, that, that role as the head football coach and the caretaker uh, of this tradition-rich program. So thank you for that, uh, that note of that. Next up, South Florida, Saturday at Notre Dame Stadium. What kind of challenges can the Bulls pose for your team? Well, we remember the last time they were here. I certainly do. Well, I didn't uh, want to bring that up. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, look, you got to be prepared uh, each and every week. Uh, athletic, uh, we know about their athleticism. First year help, head coach and, and coach Scott. Uh, so there's going to be a, uh, you know, a, a flair to their offense that looks a little bit like Clemson. Um, very athletic on defense. So uh, again, we'll, we'll have to do a very, very good job of being prepared and being ready for a team that has nothing to lose coming into uh, Notre Dame Stadium. Coach, thank you. That will do it, folks, for this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football. Coach and I will return next week to break down all the highlights of the South Florida game. Until then, for Coach Kelly, I'm Jack Dolan. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Irish!